Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. This is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Rusty Komori. We broadcast live every Monday at 10 a.m. from the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. My guest today is Toby Tamaye. He is the president of AT Marketing, and he is recognized as one of the top marketing professionals in Hawaii, and often referred to as the digital Superman. Today, we are going beyond marketing. Toby. Rusty. Great having you here today. Great being here today, yes. You know, I had a feeling that you were going to dress up in a suit, <laughs> and I needed to kind of keep up with Thank you. Thank you. You look very good, my friend. You look so very good. this is good. the first time I'm wearing a suit on my show. You should wear suits more often. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Suits always make a man look good. Yeah. Well, you always look good. I see at all these networking <laughs> events, you. and yes. you always look good. So I have to keep up with you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you wear a suit. Thank you so much. Now, I want to ask you, Toby, about your background. Uh, can you share? with me some of your history? Absolutely. So um, I was actually born in uh, California, San Diego. Oh, wow. Um, missed my chargers, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, I lived there for a couple months and then actually moved over to IA. Uh, went to IA um, Intermediate as well as Alpha Scott Elementary. Uh, spent uh, most of my childhood in IA. Uh, after my sophomore year of high school, I actually moved to Kona. Wow. And graduated from Kona Waina. Spent uh, two years there. Uh, very interesting neighbor island experience um, compared to actually being in IA where I was right across the street from Coral Ridge Center. And so, um, but anyway, that was how I spent my childhood here in Hawaii. Did you have a far drive in Kona? Yeah, actually, so um, when I was going to school, they didn't have the uh, second high school in Kona, so I actually had to travel 30 miles to go to Kona. Island. 30 miles? <laughs> On a bus. Oh, <laughs> wow. Well, so you appreciate having cars now. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, know, I appreciate living in town now <laughs> and just moving around by Bicky and Uber. It's much more easier than going 30 miles on a bus. Awesome. Yes. Now, you went to University of Hawaii. That's correct. And what did you study, and, and why did you study what you so, did? So uh, one of the things that I did is um, I majored in management. I've always kind of wanted to start my own company. Uh, and uh, I've always been in marketing, events, promotions. You, you know, even when I was in the dorms, I was throwing some of the biggest uh, parties there. <laughs> and I'm still doing those kind of things today. And, um, uh, but, you know, and I had a big focus on Japan, so a lot of my... Uh, electives are always built towards Japanese business, Japanese speaking and writing, and that's kind of where a lot of my focus is today for my company. Great. And I want to know, Toby, what what boards have you served on or you currently serve on? Uh, currently, I sit on the board of directors for the University of Hawaii Shiler Alumni Association. Um, I've been on previous boards in the past, including the uh, Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii. That was a very... Uh, uh, intimidating board for me, <laughs> but um, you know, I learned a lot and met a lot of great people. Um, we're always looking for ways of diversifying my skills in terms of different boards and helping them do things that are really beyond marketing that they really don't know about. Yeah, and you run some of the best networking events you, in all yes. of Hawaii, and I, I love attending your networking events. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, thank you for inviting. <laughs> but how often do you tend to do these networking mm -hmm. events, and then why do you do it? Um, so. One of the things about Hawaii that we're very unique is that we just have a, a certain population that allows us to really be able to have a big network, um, yet we're not really lost in the shuffle like being in Tokyo or LA and San Francisco. And so a lot of times I, I advise professionals to take advantage of, of living here in Honolulu and going to different events. I probably go to between two to four uh, a week. Sometimes it's two to four a night. It depends <laughs> uh, what's going on. But um, you know, we're always trying to build uh, our, our our presence in the community, our presence in, in terms of who we're connected with out there. And um, it's very also it's very good to just be out there and support different organizations that are really trying to get people to get involved. And um, it's always over good food and drink as well. So it's very nice. Whenever I see you, you, you always look so happy, and, <laughs> and you have an awesome job. Thank you. Yes, um, very lucky. What is a typical day like for you? Um, so, you know, one of the, the great things about what I do for your AT Marketing, and I have a you know, great staff behind myself, and um, uh, we're, we're really built on relationships that, are, uh, that we can carry over by actually working at home. And so a lot of the things that we do is, we're, you know, wake up in the morning, I'll, I'll check emails, 
and I'll do those kind of things. I'll go to certain meetings during the day, uh, and at, at night, usually there's some type of event that I have to attend. Um, sometimes there's a lunch. Like we, one of the biggest things I do right now is uh, I go to Yelp and look at new restaurants, and that's why oh. that's why I determine what I'm going to eat for lunch. <laughs> I got to make sure that I'm there, and I make sure I tell my people about what's going on with those restaurants. But a typical day is about food, it's about meetings, it's about emails, it's about networking. Um, I do a lot of business in Asia as well, so a lot of the uh, the big bulk of my uh, afternoon is spent uh, communicating with some of my uh, constituents in uh, Tokyo and Hong Kong. Great. Now you're the president of AT Marketing, That's correct. and how how and when did AT Marketing begin? So um, uh, this is now my 18th year of business. Uh, I've been lucky enough to develop different programs in terms of marketing to both the residents and the visitors here. Uh, but of course, nine, ten years ago, I, I really got involved with social media, and that's became a big part of our of our marketing programs. So about 18 years, it's always diversifying. We're always trying to find out what's going on. We're always trying to utilize what we have and what we know to help people today, but also figure out how we can help them tomorrow with different programs. Spam Jam, Spam Jam is such yes. a huge popular event in Waikiki, and you're the organizer yes, of that organizers. event, and you've done such a great job with that. Can you tell me more about Spam Jam? So the Waikiki Spam Jam is now the largest uh, one-night food festival in Hawaii, attracting about 35,000 people. Uh, we have 20 restaurants, three stages. It's all... It's a really great uh, environment for both locals and visitors. In fact, you know, I run the Spam Jam Facebook page, and about every other three days, I'll get another person saying, hey, you know what? I am making my flight to see this, to go to the Spam Jam in 2019. Mm -hmm. And right. that's exciting. People are actually loving this event so much that they'll actually maybe come down to Hawaii and plan their vacation around. It's really just a festival about fun. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to develop at AT Marketing is develop a lot of these food festivals here in Hawaii that are not necessarily um, a paid festival. It's an, it's an open festival that really has more fun about uh, a food. I think the food here and the culture is amazing here in Hawaii, probably one of the best places in the world. And so I think we need to explore and use events more to really get more people involved in seeing really the amazing restaurants and dining we have here in Hawaii. Yeah, and Spam Jam is just part of that. Yeah, and when I attend Spam Jam, and, and I absolutely love that event, you know, it's very important uh, for the businesses and for tourists and locals. Correct. Now, what are you hearing about why they love it so much? Well, it's a corny event, and you know, I, I tell you, one of the funny things is we actually have a Wikipedia page for it. Really? <laughs> yes, it's that popular. <laughs> wow. And um, uh, I, I just think that people are always looking for those unique experiences when they're traveling abroad. I mean, if I go to Tokyo or if I go to LA, or, or I, I, I'm always looking for events that weekend. In fact, when I go to Tokyo next month, uh, uh, later on in a couple of weeks, every weekend I have a, a, like a, some type of bone dance that I want to attend or some type of festival that I'm interested in going to. So I think people are really planning their experiences around these kind of events. And as Hawaii produces more of them, we're going to be seeing much more happy visitors. Yeah, and it's very unique for sure and it's a great draw. Um, and I know for you, you're never complacent and you're always innovating. And you've organized, you're one of the main organizers for Rice Fest That's and Noodle Fest. That's correct. Can you tell me more about that? Um, so I, I've been helping out Rice Fest for a couple years. Uh, it's currently at the Howard Hughes uh, Corporation. It's a celebration of rice. Why not here in Hawaii? Uh, we have a fantastic lineup of food and vendors. Uh, and then recently in March, we started a new one. Uh, called the Noodle Festival, and that was actually very successful. We had fifteen thousand our first on our first event. Wow! Um, that was also with the Howard Hughes Corporation, and so our job right now is to really partner up with restaurants, partner up with different venue spaces, and create amazing free festivals that the public can go to, families can go to. Hey, our, our, our we're pet friendly events. Uh, with the amount of people that are growing in the Kakako Ala Moana area, we're giving them a walkable event that's going down to them. That's really exciting about what we're trying to do at the Rice and Noodle. Fest. And we're looking, we're looking for more festivals to, to start developing in 2019 and 2020. Great. You know, you, your company offers such a wide range of marketing. Mm. Um, why are you so good at public relations? Public relations, you know, again, Hawaii, we have a certain type of space that we're in. And with PR, we're very lucky that there's just so much media that are out there. And so really, Relationships is all about, you know, I've been doing this for 18 years. I've built relationships with some of the, the, the people out there, um, including, I think, our, uh, we had Justin Cruz here one day. Yeah, so there's, sure. you know, we're, we're having a lot of great people that we're connecting with all the time. 
Um, we're also are, are always looking for brand new things. We're looking for new stories and new angles and trying to be part of that. And I think that's what makes us so strong as a publicist is that, hey, Toby, something new. Toby has this. And you know, this is kind of the things that we're doing to help us grow our, our I guess, our network with the, with the media. And so what really makes us good is really relationships. It just takes time to build relationships here in Hawaii. Um, but when you build them, you can be a fantastic success. Well, and you've definitely built tons and tons of great relationships yes. with a wide range of people. And your company develops uh, marketing programs, obviously in English, but also in Japanese, Korean, and Chinese. That's correct. Can you share more about that? Um, so one of the interesting things that we've been doing over the past five years is developing uh, more programs into the digital marketing for uh, tourists. Right now, you know, we're getting about 2.5 million tourists from Asia, which is a big amount, and they mostly come here to Waikiki. So I'll just say, like, right now, we develop actually Facebook in English, Japanese, Korean, and Chinese languages. Wow. Twitter in Japanese and Korean. Uh, Instagram in Japanese, Korean. I have blogs in, in Japanese, um, blogs in Korean, and then I also run uh, the micro website Weibo for China. And so we, we, we hand these packages over to, uh, mostly to hotels and shopping centers. Uh, and we're really developing a comprehensive program to be able to communicate with tourists before they come here and after. Uh, one of the things that we're also trying to do is, you know, you, we see a lot of differences. What's the, today is about beyond marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, beyond marketing yesterday was print, um, online, uh, radio and TV. And today we have such a huge market of digital that we have to really grasp. But people don't understand that that digital marketing is different in every single country. Japan is very similar to us. Korea is kind of, China is not even close to us. Oh, wow. But people would be surprised that Hong Kong is the number one user of Facebook in the world. Really? Yes. Why, why, why is Hong Kong the number one? I think they just don't want to use Weibo like Chinese and WeChat. <laughs> <laughs> I think they just want to separate from China as much as possible. So they're not using actually their no, WeChat and Weibo there. And they're using Facebook. So is Taiwan. Taiwan is huge Facebook penetration. And so understanding these kind of things. And we don't, under, we don't expect everyone to understand that. And that's why maybe you should look for an expert like us that can really help you and guide you in terms of what is available for you, what kind of costs are available for you, and you know, how does it maintain all that kind of stuff. We're doing a lot of translations now in four languages. I mean, and so a lot of the companies here are exciting for us, um, but it's also, you know, uh, it's going to be a challenge for a lot of the smaller businesses here that are not able to do all these kind of things. And how do they market themselves to the new Asian visitors? And that's going to be a real challenge for a lot of people here in Waikiki and the neighbor islands. You're, you're definitely in touch with the current vibe that's happening in the United States and in Asia, for sure. And Correct. I mean, you're, you're doing your part to really keep Hawaii up to date in what everywhere else is doing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you also do ticketed event development. Mm. Can you talk to me more about that? Mm. So one of the things that we're uh, trying to do is AT marketing, or really me personally as myself, is to assist events to become more relevant to today's market. Uh, I think the days of us having the sit-down, 10-seat dinners and a gala and a performance is, is, is dying. And so, and a lot of the nonprofits and a lot of the event planners know it. So what I've done is I've actually developed new events and new concepts and changed the concept of the events to be more relevant towards, I guess, our millennials and Gen X ticket buyers, and our, as well as people that can possibly sponsor. And so you have to understand now what they're looking for. And what they're looking for now is they're looking for interaction. They're looking for... Um, uh, an experience. An experience is not, it's not a sit-down dinner of four courses. They're looking for 12 restaurants. They're looking for wine. They're looking for sake. They're looking for some type of ambiance that creates an experience for them. So nowadays, what we're trying to do with ticket events, and we're talking galas, fundraisers, um, silent auctions, anything with those kind of pr premise, you need to really figure out your event today. And you need to figure out how you're going to survive the next five to 10 years. And you're not going to survive the same way you're doing it today. And if you don't change it, and it takes a couple years to change it, you're, you're going to be stuck with an event that's not going to be working. Now, there's a problem now that we see here is that a lot of the people are not, that, they're not like us. They want to keep that same system of the 10 city tables, you know, and that's kind of what they love to, you know, that's what they're used to. And that's fine. So our job now is to find that balance and to find how we can keep both parties happy, how we can keep their, their traditional ticket buyers and sponsors alive, but also build their, their portfolios. And a lot of events nowadays, you have to start thinking about that. And how do you even reach this market? 
right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not no longer oh, email. You no, know, it's a totally different way to reach this millennial Gen X market. So that's one of the big projects that we're working on right now is to really look into certain nonprofits events, jump on their boards, jump on or just jump on their committees, give them some insight about how to improve their restaurants, how to improve their drinks, how to improve their experience, how to improve their sign auction, how to improve their marketing, and you know how to improve basically going beyond marketing. No, that's that's great insight and. You know, Morimoto's had their grand opening in Waikiki that I attended, and Joy of Saki is such a Joy great Saki's event, too. Yeah, such, a, such a popular event. Toby, when we, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I want to talk to you about why you are the digital oh, superman. All right, let's do it. <laughs> you are watching Beyond the Lines with my guest, Toby Tamaye. We will be back in one minute. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. Go to hungeris.org to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. I was so young to understand what it means. I could have till I could be 17. One in three teens who smoke will lose years of these moments. It's your life. Don't miss a thing. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. In case you are just tuning in, my guest today is Toby Tamaye. He is one of the top marketing professionals in Hawaii and often referred to as the digital superman. Toby, you are the digital superman. <laughs> <laughs> and you're an expert in so many things That's digital. Correct, yes. can, you tell, can you tell me about that? So um, one of the things that my company, AT Marketing, is really trying to strive for is becoming the uh, digital experts. And when we're talking digital, we're talking so many different landscapes of digital, from social media to websites to online advertising, uh, influencer marketing of social media, bloggers, um, news sites. I mean, it goes on and on. Advertising on AdWords, advertising on Google, making sure your Yelp listing is correct. Just keeps going on and on and on. And so, and we're just talking again, one language, English. Let's let's separate this and go into multiple languages. And we got another, you know, uh, another way of that we have to really figure out how to communicate digitally. So, so our job, just keep learning. We know that this is the way that the market is moving, or a lot of the shift to mobile as well. And so as we talk, as the viewers are watching this today, there's such a big shift in the landscape in terms of digital. And even for people like us, it's still hard to maintain and keep up. There's the, the virtual reality part of where marketing mm. is headed to. Can mm. you talk about that virtual sure. reality? So uh, VR is a big project for ours. Um, we are, I'm actually traveling, I'll be in Hong Kong from July 15 to 17, um, visiting a VR studio there called Shadow Factory. Uh, it's actually owned by uh, a local boy from the Big Island. Uh, he started the company about two years ago. Now he has 65 employees. It's a very large production now of developing VR and augmented reality. They actually have relationships with Facebook as well. Um, so they're developing some programs at Facebook. Our job right now is to learn what they're doing in Hong Kong, learn what they're doing in their satellite cities, such as LA and Tokyo, as well as uh, Taipei. Get that information and bring it here to Hawaii and show them, okay, this is what other people are doing. This is how they're interacting with the market. This is the products that they're selling. This is what they're doing for trade show. This is what they're doing for events. This is what they're doing for uh, uh, on YouTube. How do you get that information out there? And how do you build it? That is what I'm, we're trying to learn for now. So VR is really what I think is the next step of marketing. First, you had social media that came in a little while ago. I think now VR and augmented reality and mixed reality will be the next medium that people will have to learn for marketing. So you, you touched on augmented and mixed reality. What is that? So augmented reality, for people who uh, understand Pokemon Go, it's basically just using a real world look and putting different type of filters in it. For example, what I think is going to happen one day is that you're going to go, um, you're going to be on Amazon one day, and Amazon says, take a 360 pan of your room. Then you do it, and then you'll, you'll see like 
pick which lamp you want. Boop, and you can put the lamp in there inside an augmented reality. You can see exactly what it would look like you put on this. You can put, you can put in beds, you can put in TVs, you can put in pianos. I mean, they're going to really look at this whole system as a way of you developing your lifestyle through what you see, but placing things in there that are not supposed to be that's there. That's exciting. Yes. And, that, and that's going to happen. And that's happening already. It's happening now. It's happening now around the world. Hawaii is always a little bit late, but we're going to get there. Are you going to bring it to Hawaii? We're going to bring some good stuff here, yeah. <laughs> we actually brought some programs uh, with DFS and Michael cores last uh, winter we had a gaming system where they actually started to catch on uh, Michael Kors bags um, it was through VR and uh, it was for the yeah for the winter at the DFS Waikiki and so it was a really interaction for the guests and what did you see they see the bag they catch it down oh there's the Michael Kors bag right on the ground wow ready to buy that's amazing so it's really about interaction and creating more engagement with people today that's great yes now, regarding social media, a few weeks ago I had Emma Wo oh, as Emma, yes. a guest on my show, and I refer to her as the, the queen of social media. <laughs> I could see that, yes. And I know that you are the king <laughs> of social media. Can, uh, can you tell me about you know, your, why you're the king of social media management and advertising? Well, I, uh, thank you for... for Thank you for that, first of all. Um, I give honest feedback, so you know. You know, what uh, I've worked hard. I built a huge following on my Instagram, my LinkedIn, my Yelp, my, my Facebook. Um, huge, huge following, thousands and thousands of people. And so what, we, what, I've really, uh, what that has allowed me to is to really express myself in terms of promoting events, promoting restaurants, promoting people, promoting this show. I'll make sure you guys watch my show today. <laughs> yes. and, um, you know, really getting that together um, in terms of like who I am, what my company does, and what I want to deliver through these mediums. Um, I'm really excited about what social media is. I, I really advise when I talk to a lot of the classes at, at UH and, and KCC, I always tell them, you need to build a social media network that will. You say, well, how is that going to make me successful? It's going to make you a little bit more successful than you are today. So. I advise people right now to really look at their network and how they build. And if you get built, you know, maybe the king of social media where I can promote stuff and bring people anytime I need to, which is what I can do right now. Yeah. <laughs> With a, with a point of a button. Totally. Um, that's really exciting things to really know that's happening in today's world. Do you feel that social media is just going to get bigger and bigger? Absolutely. It's, we're just we're in the early stages right now. Um, we haven't seen a lot of entrants come in. Snapchat was probably the last one that came in. Um, but it's really Facebook and Instagram here in Hawaii, um, as well as around the world. So it's just going to get stronger. There's going to be more interaction with what you're going to see with Facebook, with augmented reality, as well as what you're going to see, how Instagram is delivering stories to people, and how we're using them as actually influencers to help promote our brands. I want to ask you about that. What what insights can you share about Instagram mm -hmm. social media influencers? So right now, uh, locally, we have about uh, 250 people on our database that deal with food, health. Uh, I'm sorry, food or fashion. And uh, so we'll invite them to parties. You know, there's a one tonight. There's another one tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so there'll be a bunch of food influencers there that are locally that have you know thousands and thousands of Instagram followers. And so what we're expecting them to do is you know post one on on their Instagram and maybe an Instagram stories. What, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm actually trying to build. And if you guys don't know what Instagram posts and Instagram stories is, you should really know the difference because it'll help you out. Um, we're really trying to build Instagram stories, uh, so we're trying to build influencers. Uh, recently, last week, we had six uh, influencers from Japan. They all had 165,000 or more followers. Wow, that's and big. so um, sent them to a restaurant, uh, you know, just asked for some Instagram stories for trade. And so a lot of people right now are really looking at how do we get more influencers into the market from Japan, from the US, even here locally. Uh, Maui, Big Island, that's where the control is of, of messaging now. But how do you know them? How do you meet them? How do you grow them? That's the challenge that we're having today. And you yourself is a major influencer. I, 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 I do have some draw, yes. So how did you build your network? You know, so one of the things that I do right now is, um, let's say I met you seven years ago, I would ask for your business card. Today when I meet you, I ask for your Instagram handle. Really? Yes. Why, why is it like because that now? Because I'll be connected to you. Mm. A business card is basically, I put it on my desk, and that's it. And I'm, I probably won't see it again. But I'll see you in my Instagram feed. I'll learn who you are. I'll learn. And it's not like you're telling me, Toby, look what I'm eating. Toby, look what I'm doing. You're not telling me any of that. I'm actually going there and looking at it. And so much people come to me and say, you know what? I went to this restaurant because of you. I went to this place because of you. You know, I, I, it's, It feels so great to know that people are listening and being engaged and, and, and showing enthusiasm to do things that we're showcasing 
all together on social media. You have a great connection with the Japanese people. I mean, you love the Japanese I love Japan, people. Yes. What What do you know about the Japanese people that others don't? Well, um, so I'll be flying to Japan next week. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll be there. That doesn't uh, surprise me. I'll be there for two weeks in July, which is so hot. Don't go <laughs> in July. Uh, but I go there every July. Uh, and so uh, I, I travel there a lot. I, I, I know the food. I know the, the culture. I study music. I study news. Um, right now, Unfortunately, I'm, I, I, I'm recording the World Cup <laughs> against uh, Japan and Belgium. Awesome. That's how much I love to really be connected to the culture. So people have to understand, if you really want to understand a culture and really be connected, there's, you got to do homework. And once again, beyond marketing, you got to go beyond what you know, what you want to do, and keep learning. I, I wish I could learn Korea. I wish I could learn Taiwan. I wish I could learn Hong Kong. I mean, there's so, so many other uh, cultures I want to develop. But of course, definitely Japan is my expertise. Flights to Japan, crazy are cheap, very crazy cheap. cheap. Now. So why is crazy that? cheap? Uh, last year, uh, two air carriers came in, uh, Air Asia and uh, Scoot. Uh, they actually flying in through Osaka, and because of that, their low cost, uh, low low cost airlines, they actually were able to drop the rates dramatically to the Osaka region. Unfortunately, it's not been happening with the Narita and the Tokyo market. However. Uh, starting next May, uh, Air Nippon Airlines is supposed to be flying three daily flights, uh, these large Airbuses that wow. are double-deckers. And that's going to create more seats, and you might see better pricing coming starting next summer. So it's a very exciting time to go to Japan. Right now, Osaka will be priced very low for a while, um, and I see Tokyo being priced very low for starting next summer. Great opportunities yes. for the people of Hawaii. And the food is much cheaper. You'll be surprised. Hawaii is just a very expensive place. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and delicious. The, the food's great in Japan. Yes. I, 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 love, I love even the food at the airports in oh Japan. Oh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, uh, one of the famous uh, restaurants I just, uh, is called Sudo Tonton. They're in the Haneda restaurant. Um, I was in the Haneda airport. And they just actually opened up at the Rohawain Center great. a couple weeks ago. So Hawaii is getting a lot of great restaurants. I mean, we're so lucky to live here, uh, especially if you love Japanese food. And you love Instagram, put it up and show everybody what's going on at these restaurants. Help them out. It really helps people out when you promote <laughs> them on their Instagram. Toby, you know, you're always so positive and you're full of energy. Uh, what, what inspires and motivates you every day? Oh, what motivates me? Uh, you know, I, I definitely got some motivation reading your book. Thank you so much. You know, <laughs> Beyond the Lines really gives me information and insight. You know, I, I refer back to that book quite often. Thank you. Um, looking back at different things, you know, you need to work on yourself all the time, and you need to really understand what you're doing. Um, and for me, your type of books like Self Help is very helpful. And, you know, one of the things I'm really saying right now is for people that want to be successful, go out and just learn how to be successful. Google will help you do that. <laughs> yeah. And you're actually self-taught. I'm self-taught. Everything I've done, yeah. I've learned myself, yes. Yeah. I'm actually now uh, going to Google and learning, how do you do mixed reality in an event studio? <laughs> <laughs> I got to keep learning. Thank goodness for Google. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for Google, yes. Now, you, you shared some great insights you know, on where marketing is headed mm. and just going beyond mm. the conventional marketing. Mm. Absolutely. If people or businesses want to reach you, mm. how, how can they reach you? You know, right now, uh, the best way to reach me is to just f connect with me on Instagram. I know that's kind of tough for a lot of people <laughs> uh, at AT Marketing. You can also connect with me on Facebook at toby.tamai. But, of course, Instagram and Twitter is probably my major ways of really getting connected with people these days. Uh, we really want to make sure that people understand that with social media, it's about connection. It's about delivering information. It's about supporting businesses. It's really about beyond marketing nowadays. Awesome. Toby, thank you for thank being you, here today. It was great having you share all these insights into marketing and why you're the expert and why you are the digital You're superman. too kind. You're too kind. You're and too kind. The, and you're the king of social media. <laughs> you're too kind. I'm going to call Emma. You're too kind. <laughs> thank you, Toby. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Rusty Komori reminding you to outdo what you have done and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.